Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video and in this video we're going to be covering high elo lobbies and how to play well in them, right? Because a lot of people, you know, they win their first game in solo cash grabs but then really struggle in the following game because there's a lot of pros in those games and it, it becomes harder, right? It's not as easy as the first game. You know, there's a lot more challenging obstacles, you know, rotating becomes harder, you know, playing end game becomes harder, people survive a lot longer, you might even get to heal off. There's all these issues in these high elo lobbies that, you know, you might encounter and I I highly suspect a lot of people watching this video are struggling with that thing, right? And I really think that this video can help you. So pay attention, write some notes if you have to. This is going to be a very valuable video to you if you watch it all the way through and uh, enjoy. This, this is, this is bad. This is full. This is like sunken cost fallacy where like Kinox already spent three minutes into chasing this guy. So you kind of have to finish it. You know what I mean? I really believe there's a way to prevent this guy into turning it into a five minute chase, right? And that's what you want to do. Knox should find a way to prevent this guy from getting into a car. And it's kind of hard to see because, you know, Knox is playing the game live. You can't really tell the feature, but like you want to end the fight fast for these reasons. So it gets a really good beam, hits three shots. That's good micro, right? Really good AR aim. It's three shots. This guy's running away. You should continue to spray as you're running forward. You should try to close the gap and try to pepper. Yep, that's exactly right. So you need to cut him off, right? So you should see his intention of getting into a car. This is obviously not that obvious, but like you should try to cut him off. Ah. Uh, so before he gets into this car, needs to shoot the tire. Very, very important. So let's talk about things that he could have done. Obviously, I talked about the tire shooting, but that's kind of niche. So what if there's no car nearby, right? So the biggest thing that you should actually do in this case is to not even if you have good AR aim, don't beam from so far away right because if you beam from that far away think about what's going to happen in terms of how fast you have to follow up it's going to be taking a long time right to catch up and cut him off right so, like you have crouch lock you should not be beaming from this far away even if you have good ar aim so you should actually close the gap a little bit more you should be standing like where this tree is right and then beam him and then you will hit harder right but the more important reason is that when the fight starts you're very short distance from him right because clearly you can tell Uguay doesn't see k nox at all in this case it would be better to be a little bit closer before you start that beam and obviously there's a risk like oh like what if he turns around and sees me that's why i don't want to chase him very slowly but i think that distance is a little bit too much that's a fair concern for sure but that distance is a little bit too far because now closing the gap even with pepper will take a long time and give Uguay a lot of options to get away and i want you to make sure you understand how easy this is by the way one tire two tire literally very easy to shoot right now Right, so you pull out the AR, shoot both, and then get in the car. This is free. So now let's talk about how you can recover if something like this happens. Because maybe it's not you chasing, but someone griefs you, right? So how do I recover? So he's 4-2-2 right now, right? So he does need to fix his metal and his brick, but that's fine. It's not even that important that he fixes his metal, honestly. Um, it's more important that he just gets his brick right now. Because I can't really think of that many metal sources nearby, right? Gas station, fine, but there's someone there. Find the unlooted house. Do you see how dependent this was to find this? If this doesn't happen... He knocks his screwed. It is very, very lucky, honestly, that he finds this house. Because now he's back to 342. And then this guy, someone sold K Knox's metal. That's really awkward, right? Goes deep, right? Doesn't want to show you congested side, so you want to go deeper. It's kind of free to do so too. No one's holding you. I totally think you should try to base up. See where he's going. He's going all the way around. Raggy, yeah. You get metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. This is right. This is so right. Right? Because there's no metal here. It's actually mostly brick. A lot of people think it's metal. It's not really metal. Um, so if you really think about this, like where can I go to find metal? And Steamy is one, right? But there's not actually that much metal either in these houses or these buildings. Uh, and Craggy is the other option. So I think he goes all the way to Craggy, right? Take some hits on the car and even worth it to take some hits on your body to get this metal, right? Like it's fine. You just need the metal. So he goes all the way to Craggy, hard forces it because then you get the reward of getting like literally like 600 more mats to max out your, and then finds a pad. Craggy's actually unlooted, wow. So you could argue that he's getting lucky. Oh my God, he's finding a lot of unlooted buildings, but is it really lucky? He's moving out of his way to go find them. A lot of people in this game, even though it's a high low game, would like, oh, I'm gonna go fight this guy, like instead, and then grief their whole game. So Knox fully understands he can't really fight right now. It's a stack game. It's a, you know, high kill, high elo lobby. Not high kill, rather. It's just high elo lobby because Knox won his first game. Um, can't really fight right now. Let's just try to get kitted. Going hard dead side here, right? Trying to get up the hill from the dead side angle. So, like, a lot of people don't understand this, right? Like, so dead side is obviously good. Um, 
but there's more benefit to dead side than people think it's not just an uncongested area but it's also easier to approach the center and get onto the hills and stuff from dead side right so like try getting onto that uh, the hill from here and obviously it seems evenly congested but most of these people are gonna look to the south because that's where most people are coming from really fight for your economy right like make sure you have good maps make sure you have good loot like it's hard to win a game without that it's not easy this is why macro even in solo cash cup which a lot of people think is just all mechanics and fighting macro is important and his decision to go to craggy to find loot and max out his metal is really important it's good and the most important step as to why that's possible by the way which a lot of people just forget to do is the fact that he has a car yeah, like a lot of people just don't have a car with them in zone one zone two and it's really hard to make stuff like this happen if you don't have a car like good luck trying to get across the map and getting to craggy he pads this because it's actually a really hard pepper I, I think i agree with this the only reason i agree with this by the way um is because it's high low lobby otherwise it's pretty difficult a lot of people also base in brick when there's a lot of server spray potential totally disagree please base in metal when you feel like you're gonna get service paid because it's really really important you don't die here he does go a little bit early he goes six seconds before the zone goes i don't agree with this by the way um because of the fact that he has a pepper i think you should sort of let someone else go and follow them right and in this case like it's okay if you're backstorm because of the fact that you have a pepper because look the now like he's a blind target like literally trying to run across this like empty space which is really hard it's to burn a lot of mats, right? To, like, make sure he doesn't get full beamed. And then he has to stop anyways. It's not possible to get across this for free. Best time to do it, by the way. It's literally in a couple seconds where a lot of people are going to have to move. And then you can go. Right? So now people are going. This is also someone's pad. Like, you could have waited for this. Like, it, I know it seems like, oh, he's going to have to tank Storm. But, like, he has a pepper. It's fine. There we go. Fine. Good. Finally gets the pad. Okay. I do think that he's going too hard um because he's not blocking off his side where a lot of people are looking at him from tricks is looking at him dino's looking at him um he should totally place a wall right here and then also pay really close attention to how many people are here he does not get pumped right for sure he does not get pumped but it's not a reliable like it, he could have gotten pumped so he should take his time a little bit get pumped for a little bit it could have been harder like th that was a bad approach to the launch pad you should take a little bit more time and sort of observe in front of you and then go if that makes sense this is good angles to, to AR from. That's a kill. Let's try. All good. These, okay, it's third parties, right? Third parties, name of the game. Why shoot at Kilo here when you could literally shoot a little bit to your left? So obviously the main reason why he doesn't shoot to the left is probably because he doesn't notice it. But these guys are the guys you want to shoot. You hear shock and shot coming from this direction. You hear the fact that they're fighting. They're going to be distracted. So now these guys have to deal with three different things. The fight that's happening, right, with each other. They have to deal with you AR spraying with them. And they also have to deal with the storm. And then number four optional is someone else spraying at them, right? There's so many things they have to deal with. Whereas this guy doesn't really have to deal with all that much, right? He's covered, he has cover, and he's also not getting third party, right? So, like, it's a really easy way to just get across. Like, we'll die, right, if you spade at them. Right? Like, this isn't the point. Like, you should look for the third parties, and if you ever wondered, like, hey, how should I get AR kills? I can never find AR kills. It's third party. The answer is third parties. That's what you need. Goes up a lot of layers. I actually like that a lot because you want to be on an isolated layer. You don't want to be on, like, low ground right here when everyone's ahead of you. Drop sound left because it's kind of free. You can see the empty space. And then this way, you don't have to block off your side. He's like the biggest thing that you could take away from this rotate right here is the fact that he's staying to one side. That's really simple, right? You don't want to be in the middle because then you have to block off left and right. That's a lot of wasted mats, right? So it's kind of hard for people to see him. And he's just chilling, right? Like, how many mats did he waste there? Pretty much nothing. And doesn't place cone on top. I love it. It's so good. Like, pretty much all of second moving, he free rotated. Not kidding, right? Because he launch padded the first half and the second half he just walked with the pepper. It's going to do the same here. He's going up a couple layers to find a few layers. This layer looks kind of free, right? But these guys are ahead, right? Like, don't be scared of walls. That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for, like, the front box. But that's where most people will be in solos. Tries to get this kill. This is sketchy. Look, I don't like this. I know he's using audio cues, but when he changes layers, you need to, like, do a, either a quick check behind you or just, like, build. And he doesn't block off a lot of these angles. Good jump in, probably has info on that guy. Let's watch him again. Yeah, he hits him. He hits him earlier, right here, right? And he keeps going for that guy. A lot of people in endgame don't like to go after a target if they slip away. But like in most cases, you can actually chase him. So he's going down the middle, which I don't like, right? Like why not why not just go up? Let's find him. 
Why not just go up here? Right? And you can lean towards the left and find the left angle where you, which obviously a lot of people like, right? But he's going down the middle and he's peppering, which is fine. He's sort of like free rotating. Not a lot of people are looking at him. And then he chases the guy. He keeps track of him, which is very important because this is how you find impacts and then jump in, right? In an end game, the, the amount of time it should take for you to kill someone, it has to be very small because getting third party in an end game is, is you're dead. Like good luck, right? It's really bad to get their party in end game. So if you, the way to avoid that is to end these fights quickly. Best way to do that is jumping in with an HP vanish. And it's it's the most consistent way to actually end a fight quickly. He needs to get out here. This is really bad. Oh, that was a sketch. Okay, so let's talk about how this could be fixed. Let's pay attention. Cones the box, right? It's his cone. Shoots. And here's the problem. He's looting in a box that's not his without breaking a wall first. So as soon as you get a kill, your first instinct should not be to loot. Your first instinct is to break and replace a wall and make another box, right? You should value your life more than the mats, honestly. Full heals, which is obviously correct. Every everyone should do this. If you're really low, you should heal. Gets on the left side, so he doesn't have to build his left side. It's a really nice rotate, but what I don't like is the fact that um, this is all metal. Uh, this can be wood. You're, you're fast rotating, right? You're not pausing anywhere here. This could all be wood and you can like cone the tops if you need, but you should save your metal. Your metal is very important here because if you look at the mat distribution in his, in his inventory, it's a lot of wood. It's like 450 wood like this and then 100 metal. So this metal is like where you want to pause, right? You see these boxes. I shall buy easy loot. Ah, uh, mistake. What, what's wrong here, right? Let's go back. Watch it again. That's fine. He is a little bit close to the window, so that's kind of iffy. Uh, you, you should be a little bit further back, but that's okay. Not that concerned. I like that. I loved actually that he checks to see what this guy is doing before going for the loot. Again, your life and your like surroundings over the loot. Do not tunnel on the loot. Just getting an impact is not the end of the deal, right? Like you have to survive after that, right? So make sure you're in a position to do that. Couple things. He should use his whites as a resource again to quickly pick up the wood. And also have good enough awareness to notice the gold spaz, right? So that's okay. The gold spaz is kind of hard to see. It's all the way in the back. This wood is very obvious, right? You have to see this. This is very important. It's literally one extra step into picking possibly 150 to 500 wood. You don't really know. It could be siphon mats, but again, we don't know. I'm pretty sure it's siphon mats, but again, even five builds is a big deal at this stage of the game. Lovely that he blocks his back. A lot of people don't do this. That was a good hit. You should jump in. Jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in. Ah, uh, bad execution. Bad execution. This is very easy to kill, by the way. Um, it, it just takes a little bit of practice and some, like, committed, you know, committed practice to the idea of, like, making sure that the first time you break the wall, there is a ramp behind you and you're trying to get in. So, a couple things here, right? So, the, the way you get in is very important because if you do it correctly, you can actually just kill this guy straight up. One, one way to get in, right, is without the ramp. If you time... The wall break with exactly when you pass this wall or run into the wall you can actually get in without a ramp right so he should stop shooting for a little bit wait until he's a little bit closer and then finish breaking the wall he can actually get in for free that makes sense so that's an exploit right that's a that's a very easy exploit the other way to get in which is probably the more consistent way is to spray this wall two times three times right and then pause ramp and shoot one more time and jump in with AR, right? Because clearly this guy's one shot. I, I love the idea that he's chasing this guy, right? This is something that Caden Knox does very, very well. He actually does it perfectly, right? Which is the idea that if you crack someone, and you should notice the crack because it's very obvious in game when, some, when you crack someone, you should go for the kill, right? Why are we leaving these guys empty and letting them heal? It's the same concept as a mid-game fight or an early-game fight. It's the exact same concept. It, it's just applied in endgame. And actually, in endgame, it's way more important because there's only so many opportunities that you're going to find. Right? So like when he's at 20 builds or 40 builds, he should go for something. You don't have max mats. You, you, your time is running up, right? You really need to make a play. Otherwise, you're going to die. I love the fact that he prioritizes metal on the side. Like th this is his awareness, right? It's very obvious. He prioritizes metal on the side where he's most likely getting a shot from. So above, below, and the front and the side. But then wood on the back, right? And you don't have to. This is like a very minor detail. But it's, to me, this shows Caden Ox's awareness and understanding of the game. Tank Storm, use whites as a resource. You don't have any mats left. Do not go forward right here, right? 
trying to go forward is a kind of sketch and like you should go for something and then if you really run out of time you can go forward that's fine you have no other option right you're not gonna just die to storm go back in storm again right he's getting focused go back in storm now notice when you go backwards it's really hard to look down and shoot at you so jock is shooting down really hard to look down and shoot right when you go back in storm good kill at this point it's like kind of lucky to go for this is why i'm saying it's so important to do that exploit right when you get that crack on someone that is your opportunity to find max off that kill that could be height because you then get a really important impact right you might get like 50 to 60 to 70 builds which then gives you the leverage to go for height and that would be really good right because then you would win the game so let's see how Knox wins it at this point this is a very famous scenario it's like a one-on-one -on -one scenario no third party opportunity so jock is actually pretty low all right, obviously, Knox doesn't know this. He just shoots him and dies. So, Jock also runs out of mats, which is very obvious from Knox's POV. I can see that, right? And I think this part is actually, you know, you never really know how many mats the, the high player has. If Knox wants to win this without a doubt and, you know, not get sort of lucky that Jock runs out of mats here, um, which it's not entirely lucky. Knox played this very, very well, I, I must say. But it is fortunate that Jock runs out of mats uh, and Knox does have a decent amount of mats left. At this point in the game so if jock has like 10 more builds uh and a little bit more hp it would be it would be nice for for him but doesn't so he probably loses the game the best way for Cade Knox to win this very very consistently no matter what is to get this exploit right right where he goes for that kill and make sure he gets in there right here pumps him and obviously we have replay mode we can see it but Cade Knox knows this guy's cracked right so it's very important to do this part correctly one two three pause and then literally shoot it at the exact time that you need to get in or do the ramp ramp way that i've shown you right this is a more common way that a lot of people do but a lot of people don't know that you can just exploit in without the ramp as well so this is very important like you know that guy's one hp you're 200 hp like how are you losing that you're never losing that and obviously k Knox knows this because he's trying to get in right it's just the micro execution of that get in is not right that's basically it guys like seriously end game is all about third parties it's all about cracking someone and getting in and it's all about really really using your mats efficiently and not wasting them because if you waste a lot of mats the time at which you need to force an impact is much sooner than it needs to be right it becomes much much sooner uh, unnecessarily as well like why do you need to do that so this is really how you get a good start in a solo cash cup guys like seriously if you do something like this right Play very, you know, cautiously in third and fourth zone. Play somewhat aggressively in first game and first and second. And really make sure you're, you know, third party in end game. Third party mid game too. It's pretty free, obviously. And just making sure that you're playing safe, but not using mats to an extensive amount. Uh, and the way that you do that is to play, you know, left and right side and find isolated layers, right? The left and right side is more important in my personal opinion than isolated layers. Because if you play left side, right side, and even if there's people on your layer and you just need to build on one side, uh, it's really nice. Really, really nice. So I think that's what you should try to do. But the most important thing is the art of the impact, right? If you crack someone, you have to get in. Just go for it, right? And uh, if you do it correctly, just like the first kill in that game, right? In Endgame, uh, where Knox goes for that jump in. Um, it was very good. He finds the impact because of that. And I really like that. I, I think you guys can learn a lot from that. So if you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And uh, yeah.